Hi everyone, uh, I'm Andre. I'm an uh, AI project management intern. Um, and for this last cohort of internship, uh, I was working on our prompt engineering lab. lab. Um, so looking forward to kind of explaining a little bit about um, the work that we did during this. Um, but before we start, I just want to give kind of like a, a bit of a personal story about why uh, I think prompt engineering is, is important and why it's useful. Um, and so to start it off, uh, alongside a mentorship, I'm also a candidate uh, at Queens for um, my MMAI program. Um, my favorite class during this program was NLP, where we learned kind of a variety of different traditional NLP techniques, uh, rule-based, shallow-based, deep learning. We learned a bunch about different tasks you can do with NLP. Um, and then we learned how to build the models ourselves, taking out structured data, cleaning the data, uh, feature extraction, creating an algorithm, uh, and then taking you know, a new set of data and um, repeating your cleaning and, and using the algorithm to come up with a, a prediction. Um, so you know, quite an intensive class. It was a ton of fun. It was able to kind of uh, go and then take this and put it into practice, create my own sentiment analysis. Um, I did exploratory data analysis. Uh, I did pre-processing, uh, trained the model, and I was able to achieve an accuracy of 70% where someone like me who's not technical, that was um, pretty cool. Uh, and then our teacher taught us uh, about his new favorite technique, which was bond engineering. And that, that, that's what he did. Um, so with this, he didn't have to do any EDA. He didn't have to do pre-processing. The model came pre-trained and he got a 4% better accuracy than I got. Um, so this, this was kind of like a bit of an eye-opener that um, you know, the, the, these large language models are getting to a place where actually they're, they're really capable of some fantastic stuff uh, if you know how to get uh, the best out of them. So uh, for this chat, I'd like to kind of go over three things. One is an overview of our PE lab. Two is just a quick introduction to prompt engineering um, kind of what is it? And then three, some of the interesting learnings and outcomes that we uh, got from this lab. Um, so first I want to start with like, what is a lab? Uh, really a lab is, is two things. One is a um, knowledge transfer, and then two is it's, it's a place for participants to come and experiment and, and try uh, out these technologies and come up with use cases. Um, quick shout out to the team, especially our two fearless leaders, Diana and, uh, and David. Um, that worked with some really like fantastic people and then um, uh, both prior to and, and at the lab itself. Um, so a little bit of overview of the lab, over here the, the, the knowledge transfer was around state-of-the-art pond engineering techniques um, and then the idea was they would come with use cases after. Um, my work primarily focused around two things. One was the preparation phase, making sure that all the participants were uh, ready for the labs, set up with our cluster and had um, uh, kind of prepared um, an idea of what they wanted to get a lab ahead of time. And then two was uh, working as a facilitator during the lab to help make sure that it went smoothly. Uh, the lab, uh, during the lab, we were, uh, we used a variety of models from one from uh, the Technology Innovation Institute from Abu Dhabi, uh, which was a Falcon family of models. And the second was a lot, uh, Meta's Llama 2 family of models um, of 7 billion and then 40 and, and 70 billion. So not only do we try out models of, from different organizations, but we're able to try out models of different sizes. Um, we also covered a variety of topics. So the first thing was how do you evaluate LLMs, things like uh, how do you evaluate performance, um, how do you evaluate fairness and bias. Uh, secondly, obviously, prompt engineering techniques, uh, things like zero shot, few shot, and chain of thought prompting. Uh, and then we also covered some, some of the alternative kind of existing gold standard state of the art. Um, methods for getting the most out of your, your large language model that's, you know, taking a pre-trained model and then fine-tuning it, um, or retrieval augmented generation or RAG. Um, but really the primary focus was, was around prompt uh, engineering. Uh, we had, we were joined by a variety of different uh, teams for different companies in different industries, um, which really made the insights all the more interesting. Um, it was a three-day lab, um, morning sessions were uh, very informative. Afternoon was hands-on, and at the end there was there was that knowledge sh uh, sharing, um, which I'd be excited to talk about later. Um, next, I'll go into kind of the introduction to pump engineering. Um, so starting out with, and maybe this is a little late in the presentation, what is pump engineering? 
so some process of structuring um, uh, an instruction that can be generated by a Gen AI model. Um, there's a few types. There's zero shot prompting, asking a question. Uh, there's single or few shot prompting, asking a question, but giving a few examples. Um, and then there's chain of thought prompting, which is asking a question, giving examples, but also explaining how would you like it to think through the problem itself. Um, and as you can see, as adding context to prompts actually really improves the output of the quality of the problem. Uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, why, why, why prompt engineering versus other techniques? Uh, one, we see that uh, fine tuning large language models is, is becoming um, more and more difficult. They're, they're, you know, models are reaching the trillions of parameters in size, and not every organization has the capability to, um, to, to work with these. Um, two fine tuning models are not repurposable, so you can do you can fine tune it for a specific task, but it'll be, probably be biased towards that task. Whereas a pre trained model, um, it's it's kind of more generalized. Uh, and then finally, is is performance. You can actually see that you know on sufficient uh, model size, you actually see comparative performance to what you get from fine tuning. Um, and you know LLMs can actually just do a lot of the same tasks that. We uh, would, would do with a, a task specific model, um, just so maybe with an easier user interface. Um, and so uh, now, learnings and outcomes. Um, I want to on the on the last side. I want to just capture like two two points. First one is um, a lot of the interest from our participants was uh, we saw a lot of interest around evaluating evaluation of LLMs, evaluation of chatbots, um, which which um, for like bias and fairness, um, which. It's a great thing, um, and I think it, it kind of shows where um, a lot of people's head are at with uh, with LLMs at the moment. Um, in terms of the time spent, it was it was bucked into a few categories. One is they spent a lot of time on task specific stuff, so summarization, translation. Um, how do you actually do the task with these? Second is just your basics of prompt engineering, uh, kind of like chain of thought prompting, things like that. And then the final final thing was really around like fairness and bias, um, and trying to understand that. Um, and then here are just a few like um, kind of call out insights that from the discussions that I thought were really interesting. So firstly, uh, we see the current uh, uh, use case limitations of LLM sort of are kind of like around two things. One is the computational resources um, that it takes, uh, and then two is the, the the trust in the output. So we saw, as we said, we saw a lot of interest in like uh, uh, bias and fairness, but also in things like RAG and how to use temperature to to, to Make the model more deterministic. Um, we also heard a lot of trade offs between like large models, smaller models. Um, conversations around this were, you know, typically a trade off between performance, speed, model size, task complexity, and scope. Um, and uh, we also saw that, you know, model dependencies, uh, there, there were model dependencies for specific problems. So, uh, you know, one model that one prompt that worked really well on uh, one model that was optimized. Uh, when you take that to another model, it may not work, even in models of the same size. Uh, and then the final thing was smaller models uh, showed to be super sensitive to a chain of thought. So you know, if you use a one or a ten or a hundred in your example, uh, your answer should kind of have the same thing, which I, I thought was kind of interesting. Um, and so, in conclusion, just want to wrap it up with four points. One, prompting LLMs can reduce a lot of friction uh, in performing common LLP tasks. Two, uh, adding context. Uh, to prompts really improves the output of the quality of the prompt. Um, because prompt engineering has benefits over uh, uh, over traditional like fine tuning, um, and then finally prompting uh, prompt engineering results can can be very model dependent. Um, so, for my presentation, thank you for listening. Any questions? Can you explain a bit more about prompt and the bias or fairness issue in the prompt engineering? Yes, I can try my best. Uh, so, from what I understand, and I'm not a technical person here, um, so the the they used a few uh, uh, kind of techniques. Um, these are called like FNED, FNED. Um, essentially. Uh, like false negative, false positive for trying to categorize certain prompts, taking an LOM and saying, can you categorize this into um, 
into whether it's like fair or unfair um, for like a male or a female um, or something like that, right? Um, and if they got the categorization wrong, then then we would assume that it's like um, you know that it's, it's not fair or it's biased. Any other questions? Um, you got a chance to engage with a bunch of the kind of sponsor companies and uh, that were participating in the lab. Any insights in terms of like uh, what they see in getting value out of these types of labs? Like, where did anything that surprised you in terms of like the type of people or the types of questions they were most interested in? Yeah, I think um, I'll start with the last question first, which was uh, anything surprised about the type of people, the type of questions. I think. Um, you know, content engineering is kind of seen as something that's democratizing, uh, like the data scientists democratizing AI, but it's actually quite a technical team of people that was working there, which I found quite uh, surprising. Uh, in terms of what they were kind of focused on, um, I thought it was it was quite interesting. A lot of them seemed um, a little bit apprehensive about taking LLMs and putting them into production at this point. So a lot of the focus seemed to be around, like, as we said, like bias uh, and fairness of LLMs. Um, and then uh, but we we did see that you know they got they got some some pretty good results um, out of it. So I'm, I'm, I think uh, we we can probably expect that they're gonna like a lot of companies will be looking to are definitely looking to uh, use these and they're trying to just figure out you know how do we do it in a fair way.